Hi there, it's been a while. Uh, my name is Dan. I'm a qualified teacher in Melbourne, Victoria, and I'm going to teach you how to write uh, a good text response essay, a good uh, essay that is drawing from some type of text that you're studying. So how to write a good text response essay. So the first thing you need to understand is that we can separate uh, a text response essay into generally two parts. So on the left here, we have ideas. On the right here, we have structure. So basically, when I'm talking about ideas, what I'm talking about is uh, like there's a, a question that's being asked of you, right? And so the question might be, uh, to what extent does this text represent reason or something like that? That's a question, right? And then we could discuss that question together in person, or we could put those ideas into a play, or we could put those ideas into a debate, but those ideas kind of remain the same. What makes an essay different is that you're applying those ideas to a particular structure, and so that's what's on the right. So we are going to take those ideas, the topic, contention, and arguments, and we're going to apply them to a particular structure, uh, the introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion. And I'm going to go through exactly what each of these six uh, structures mean. So let's start with the topic. So in my school, we're teaching the film Zootopia. Hopefully most of you have seen Zootopia. This was the uh, prompt that we gave them. It says this. Judy Hopps is correct when she says in Zootopia, anyone can be anything. Do you agree? So I'm going to run through a little bit of my thinking, right? So imagine you're in uh, that classroom. You sit down. You're about to take on this assignment. That's the topic they give you. What's running through my mind? The first thing that's running through my mind are the key terms. And so the key terms are the most important terms that you can find uh, in your prompt. The prompt, remember, is the question. Okay, and mostly these key terms are going to be your nouns. Yeah, so in this case, our, our main proper noun is Judy Hopps, uh, but sometimes they can be verb phrases as well. So anyone can be anything. So I'm talking about particular words or particular phrases um, that are crucial, that if you take them out of the prompt, it's going to change the entire meaning. So here we're talking about a particular character, Judy Hopps. We're talking about a particular a statement she makes. Anyone can be anything. And they define the boundary of ideas, which means that, you know, it's kind of like when you're writing an essay, this is what you can talk about. This is what we're marking you on. And if you extend beyond that, we don't give you marks. Key terms. So let's talk about contention. Now, if you haven't heard of this term contention, you need to get it into your mind right now because it's probably the most important term that you can think of when it comes to essay writing. So contention comes from the word contend, contend, uh, like the film Contender, it's about boxing. So basically to contend means to fight for something. Something is being contested and it can go either way. You're putting forward your point of view. So there again is our uh, question, our prompt. This would be my contention as an example, okay? So you say she's, she's mostly correct, but she needed to take into account that the real world was not perfect, right? So basically, what, what is that saying? It's saying that, okay, any, anyone can be anything, okay, to, to a certain extent, but it's really difficult to become anything. If you've seen the film Zootopia, uh, Judy uh, takes her passion, she takes her willpower, she expresses that through almost everything that she does. But that's incredibly difficult to do. So having a clear contention is essential. I love to think of it as being kind of on a graph of uh, zero to 100, where zero is I completely disagree with this prompt, 100 is you completely agree. But the thing is, is that a good contention, or at least the ones the assessors are looking for, uh, is always going to be somewhere in the middle. It's going to be, you know, I mostly agree, but there is a certain extent uh, exception. Or I mostly disagree, there's a certain exception there. Arguments. So when you're looking at arguments, they are the topic of the body paragraph. This is something that a lot of students get wrong. How many body paragraphs do we have in a regular essay that you need to write in, in Australian English? Three three body paragraphs, but there needs to be a particular topic for each of those body paragraphs. So these arguments lead up to your contention. 
they defend your contention, okay? So that's why you need to, and it kind of makes sense too, right? Because if you have that goal in mind, that idea you want to prove, you need that first before you can start thinking of justifications, before you start thinking of how you can defend yourself. So there's our topic again. Now, I uh, did a major in philosophy. And this is how to this is how we argue properly, at, at least how they taught us in philosophy. So let's have a look at some ideas. I'll give you an example. Number one is this. Vehicles without airbags are dangerous. Okay. The vehicles without airbags are dangerous. Let's just take that idea and just say it's true, okay? And what does that mean? It's, it's nothing on its own. Uh, but let's pair it up with this. You say a motorcycle has no airbag. Okay. So motor, uh, vehicles without airbags are dangerous. A motorcycle has no airbag. Okay. Now, it seems like these two ideas could probably link together. Let's have a look. So number three, motorcycles are dangerous. And that's our argument. Okay. So what we call the first two ideas are premises. They're basically ideas that uh, you can combine them together and they lead up to a conclusion. And so the conclusion here is motorcycles are dangerous. Let's say that was our goal right from the beginning. We're trying to prove that motorcycles are dangerous. Well, you don't come out with 15 different arguments for how motorcycles are because of this, because of this, no. What you do is you make statements that are true, they link together, and if they're true, then your conclusion's gonna be true. So why are motorcycles dangerous? Because they have no airbags. And vehicles without airbags are dangerous because when well, you crash, you die, you burn, that kind of thing. So we go back to Zootopia. These were my arguments, okay? So one, two, three. Number one, the real world is messy. The real world has discrimination. The real world has stereotyping, racism, sexism. It stops you from getting to your goal. But idea number two, paragraph number two, Judy had the passion and relationships to help overcome her prejudice. So if you have passion and relationships, suddenly the real world doesn't look so frightening. And so my conclusion here, my third idea, is that it is possible to mostly become anything, like obviously she can't turn from a bunny into a meerkat, but with enough willpower, she's able to pursue her career, she's able to pursue her dreams. And so we take the first two ideas, and if those ideas are true, our third paragraph, our third idea is going to be true. That's how you argue. Again, premises, and conclusion at the end. There's our topic again. So those are our ideas. Let's go through that in case I'm talking too fast. We'll do it one more time. Number one, I'm identifying the key term. What, what, am, I, what am I talking about here? What are the words or phrases that are important? Number two, I'm identifying my contention. What am I arguing for? Okay. Number three, I'm, argue, I'm finding my arguments. So I know what I'm arguing for. What am I going to do in each of my body paragraphs? One, two, and three. Whereas the third one is gonna be a kind of solution paragraph. I love to start the first body paragraph with a, a kind of counter example, like an example that goes against what I actually think. And then I'll argue against that in the second as a kind of exception paragraph. So that's our ideas. Let's look at the structure. So I'm going to tell you sentence by sentence, I couldn't say this easier, how to write these paragraphs, introductions. So the purpose of an introduction is to introduce that essay, to bring that essay forward. Uh, what, what are we discussing? Well, the question is what, what makes an essay? And the thing is I've already explained it. So the first sentence is going to be our topic sentence. So in other words, I want to know what is it you're discussing? What is that question that we were looking at? Okay, uh, so we're going to use some key terms in that topic sentence. Number two, or you can combine this in the first one, some people do that, your contention. 
what are we arguing for? Where are we on that scale from one to zero? Your point of view. Um, generally, I don't like saying I, but I don't like saying I because other people don't like saying I. I actually don't mind it. But um, you say, uh, Judy Hopps proves that with passion and willpower, you can become mostly anything. Okay, that's your contention. Then you want to go through your three arguments. Each of your body paragraphs, do not put them in a list. Um, a list makes it too quick. It makes it sound like you're just skipping through them. Uh, sentence each for your arguments, one, two, and three, okay? Closing sentence at the end. Now, I'm going to teach you how to write a closing sentence. It's the easiest thing you're going to, to write all year. A closing sentence is derived from the contention. So basically, we the closing sentence is the big what's the point sentence what are we doing here sentence and what we're doing here is we're trying to prove a contention so you're going to go to that contention you're going to rephrase that contention essentially and i love having therefore as a opening for a closing sentence therefore it's clear that with passion and willpower you can achieve your dreams that's it that's an introduction now, if you have done proper planning before, your planning being finding the key terms, finding your contention, finding your three arguments, that introduction is going to take you 10 minutes. It's not going to take long at all. Most people just don't know the structure. Body paragraphs. Here's the structure. So what we're trying to do, argue for that contention, right? Three paragraphs linking together to argue for that contention. Number one, topic sentence. Don't beat around the bush. Get to your point. What's the purpose of this paragraph? What's the idea you're looking for? And basically, once you have that topic sentence, that really clear topic sentence, you can keep referring back up to it to just keep yourself in check. Am I going off topic here? Because some people do. They write the topic sentence, and then I'm looking as an assessor, I'm going, your very next sentence has nothing to do with that, right? Or they've gone back to the start of the book and they're retelling the, the plot. We got to keep it to the topic sentence. Now, the next two sentences is what I call a claim or idea and, and the quotation or example. If you're doing a film like Zootopia, you can use some film techniques here. Okay. It's a basic pairing. You make a statement about the text that relates to your topic sentence. And the statement could have really to do with three things. It could be a point about characters. You're arguing something about a character's personality, about their symbolism, what their role is in the text. You could be looking at a theme point. It could be uh, to do with passion, relationships, conflict, revenge, okay, theme point. Or three, it could be a plot point. A plot point is a main uh, event that happens in your text. And so those are the three claims or ideas. You put something forward, one sentence, and then in the next sentence, you use some of these sentence stars to say, it can be proven when, then you give your quotation, right? Remember to integrate that, qu that quotation should not be quotation mark, there's a quote, ending quotation mark, full stop, right? Integrate that quotation as part of the sentence. This can be proven when Judy says such and such, full stop. Or even better, use a film technique if you're studying a film. Those are linked. That needs to get into your head. It's a very clear pairing. Idea, quotation, they need to follow. If, you're miss if you have an idea, you have no quotation, you're not backing up your statement. We're gonna mark you down for that. If you have your quotation, but no explanation, then I'm going, what's the point? You just chucked out a quotation there. I can see how it's relevant, but we're not going to give you marks unless you show how it's relevant. We link those. Repeat that three to five times, okay? That relates, again, remember, relates to your topic sentence. Lastly, we have our closing sentence. How do you write a closing sentence? Easiest thing in the world. Relate it to your topic sentence. Because that's, the way I see it is like this. Your topic sentence is looking forward. It's saying, this is what I'm going to be discussing. Your closing sentence is looking back. This is saying, 
this is what I have discussed. But notice this, if you say this is what I'm going to discuss and this is what I have discussed, you're actually referring to the same thing, that idea, that quotation in the middle, right? So if you actually just rephrase your topic sentence, I think you have a good closing sentence. Again, you can end it with therefore. Conclusions, so the one that everyone gets stuck on, really easy to write, really simple structure. Purpose is this, it's not, I repeat, it's not to provide a summary of what you have written. Although sometimes it might sound like that, that's not the purpose. It's very, it's very, uh, the people who get the purpose of a conclusion, you notice that they're styling it in a very different way. The, the real um, focus of a conclusion is to give an answer. So remember the word conclusion comes from the word conclude. Conclude means to end, yeah? So we're trying to end this question that we're asking. Remember we were being asked a question? Here's a structure. Number one, reintroduce that prompt. Some of those ideas we were talking about, you know, what, what were the main themes that were coming up that we were trying to discuss? Number two, your contention. What were you arguing for, right, uh, in regards to that topic? So the topic is kind of like an introduction of, the, of what we were trying to discuss. Your contention is your answer. It's your response. It's your judgment about that idea. Number three, you got a three body paragraphs. You go one, two, and three. Separate sentences, not uh, in a list. Lastly, closing sentence. Closing sentence relates to the contention, okay? You can even use therefore. But those of you that are perceptive might have picked up on something here. The structure for a conclusion is actually the same as a structure for an introduction. In fact, it might be a little bit shorter. Here's the difference. Number one, a conclusion's written in past tense. A introduction, because you're looking back, right? You're saying, this is what I have discussed. An introduction is looking forward. So the introduction is going to be in what tense? I'll wait. Still waiting. Future tense, good on you, look at that. And then the second, the second difference is, of course, that purpose. Your introduction's kind of like a, you know, it's like some people do science, right? I don't do science. Um, introduction's kind of like a hypothesis, like this is what I think's gonna happen. This is how I think we're gonna test this problem. But a conclusion is your conclusion. Uh, this, we did the experiment and this is what the outcome was. This is what my answer was. So that's the difference, two main differences, purpose and tense. So remember, in that Texas Fonts essay, all we're going to do is we're going to take those ideas, we're going to plan those ideas first, figure them out in your head, get some quotations as well, because that's important, that will fit under your paragraphs. We're going to apply them to that very particular structure in um, your essay. Boom. And that's it. So if you like this new format, if you like what I'm doing, uh, please leave a comment. If you have any suggestions for videos in the future, leave a comment as well. I will reply to all of them and uh, subscribe. See you later.